Hello YouTube, RJ. Hey today, got another test device. I gotta stay off eBay guys. I uh, found a vacuum to voltmeter Heath kit. It's a V7A. I picked it up very reasonable. I paid $24 for it. It has a little wear on it. Not too bad. It said that the meter seemed to work. The meter moved. Wasn't sure whether it was right. Didn't do any testing on it. So I thought what we would do is jump into this and do a little testing with it, see how it's working, kind of look it over, see how it's working, make a decision what I want to do with this thing. You know, obviously I want to clean it up. I know I can get the plastic to look clearer and get some of the, there's some tape and stuff stuck to it. I know that it's, it's dirty. I can get it cleaned up some. So those things are, you know, the, the, the arm up here could be polished a little bit, clean up a little, a little tarnish off of there. So I know I can make it look a little, a uh, little better. Let's take a quick spin of it. As I said, the plastic's in decent shape. It's just, you know, it's old. It's got some, where somebody's taped stuff to it and things. The, um, the case is not bad. The rubber grommet in the back is hard as a rock, as you'd expect, but it's in good shape. Um, you know, not, nothing on it's in bad shape. There's one little piece of damage to the case right here, if you can pick it up. Um, Somebody's probably used a screwdriver to tie, take this cover off. Didn't understand that come off. I'm not sure what they did. Ooh, I'm wrapping the cable around here. But anyway, it's it's not bad. Bottom looks fine. The feet are there. Um, so, like I said, a lot of cleaning up and stuff. Now, one thing it did is it did not have any probes with it. Probes did not come with it. And so I ordered a kit, and I thought I would show you in case you decide that you need a a set of probes for her V7A or one of the, the six or the seven or the five ones that use these particular probes. This is the kit I bought. It's a kit. You assemble it. I went ahead and assembled it. I didn't do it on camera. It's a VTVM Pro Parts Kit with Wire V Series or Heath Kit V45677A. Uses the one quarter inch phono and the banana plugs. And it's done by a ham, obviously, Kilo Kilo 4. Hotel X-Ray Juliet, uh, and the company's Kent Craft. And maybe you can read this. And just so if you need probes, uh, the price wasn't bad. It was uh, like $18, $19. It, uh, it was a nice little kit. So that saved me some time, and I've got some probes, and so now we can do some testing on this meter. I thought we would uh, start out by go ahead and hook this thing up. I thought maybe we'd do the... Um, start with DC. So let me hook the DC probe. Uh, the DC is separate from the AC and ohms that's here and your common is an alligator clip. And what I'm going to do is I've got some probes over here off my power supply. I've got my power supply and we'll verify this. Let me get my little cheapy meter fired up here. We'll verify but I think I've got it calibrated pretty close to 30 volts. So let me check that first, and then we'll see how this meter reads compared. So, take me just a second to get this rigged up. There you go, 3.02, not too bad. So let's plug this meter in, because if you know anything about them, they're like every other vacuum tube device in the world. They take a minute to warm up, and they will read differently until they warm up. What we should see here is it should warm up. And if you put it in the AC, I know for a fact, you'll see the needle swing as it comes on. So that's a good sign. I've got it in DC positive. So let her warm up a minute. Okay, we've let it warm up a minute, probably two. First thing you need to do is calibrate this to zero. And to the best of my eye, that's on zero exactly. You need to choose your range. I've got it on the 15 volt. You do that when you calibrate, before you calibrate the zero. I'm on the 50 volt DC. So here's my DC volts up here. So my DC volts for 50, 50 volts, the bottom rail here, that's your AC DC, 15 and 50. So my 50 volt down here, I've got 30 volts here on my meter. Let's go ahead and connect and see what we see. Um, looks like I'm showing about 30, 
if I lean over in your way here, I can get a better, get rid of parallax. I'm reading about 36 and a half. So we're, we're off there a little bit. Check that again. Yeah, we're reading high. So got a little calibration issue of some kind, maybe some resistors that's went out of calibration might have to change out, but that's what we're seeing on DC. So the next thing I would say is let's check AC. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my DC power supply. That's not going to help as much checking AC. Take my common off. And I've got to decide how I'm going to. I'm going to check AC. So give me a minute. Okay, I've done some swapping around. Let me get the meter over here where you can see this one also. I've uh, done some swapping around to, we're on AC for this meter now. I'm going to go to AC for this meter. And I'm going to zero the meter again. And I'm on, well, actually I need to put it on 150 volts and then zero, I don't know. Okay, now we're on 150 volts. AC, which will be the 15 scale here on the AC-DC right here. And while I don't recommend the procedure I'm doing here, I actually, I recommend you don't do this, but I've got a power cable with stripped ends here. And I've got this meter hooked up. I've got the common hooked up here and the AC probes plugged in. I've got the correct probe. And I'm going to plug this in just long enough to touch here compare what I've got here to here. A little bit of a not best practices, but it's what I had available. So we're reading 123.3, flickering 0.4.2, somewhere around there. So I'm going to grab this probe and steady it. And let's see what we get here. Okay, on the 15 scale, I'm reading 59. Hmm. So that's about half of what I should see. Verify that I'm on the 150 volt scale. I'm on AC. Here's the 15. And indeed, we're reading about 59, 58, 59, somewhere in there. So got a calibration issue there. So let's unplug this thing right now. Get, get back in a safe situation. So we know we've got some calibration issues. She's not reading accurate. So we're going to need to... Um, to deal with that. So the next test will be resistance. So I'm going to grab a couple resistors, uh, known resistors. We'll, we'll check them on both meters and we'll see what we come up with. So be right back. Okay, I've kind of straightened things around. I grabbed out a bunch of packs of resistors and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna check, this should be a 20 meg. This is actually the 20 meg that I had specifically, 1% specifically for calibrating the tube meter if you watch that video. And I'm reading this meter, 19.8 megs. 19.88 megs, okay? 19.88 megs is what I'm reading with that meter. Let's hook up this meter and see what we get. Uh, let's put it on ohms. And wait a minute, I can't do a 20 meter. I forgot this thing only goes to one meg. So, but I thought it goes to infinity. It does. Oh, it's R times one meg. Let's do R times 1000. Okay. So, Let's cross it, calibrate the meter to zero. Okay. Now, what does this read? Uh, negative? That's not good. It's not even going over here. Wait a minute. This should adjust it all the way to infinite, and it doesn't even go up. We don't even need to go any farther. I mean, this thing is knobs coming off on me for one thing. Well, that's 
going to be something we got to deal with. Or if the pot's just dirty. Uh, it's kind of acting like that could be the case. Yeah, now it's getting up there. So may maybe we get over here and try to get it to read infinite. Pretty close. Now I'll get it to zero over here, maybe. Now what do we read? Negative. <laughs> zero ohms there. Nothing there. Let's go to the one node scale and see what we can do. Okay, that's there. Uh, I don't should be moving around on me when I'm not touching it. It's going down when I let go. One of the batteries just dead. What do I read there? It's going backwards on me. We don't need to go any farther. We got problems with ohms, that's for sure. So that's kind of where we are. Okay, I think this is a good spot to end the video. We've got a good understanding of what's not working on the meter, which is pretty well everything, as you saw. And so we'll pick up in part two of this series with uh, tearing down this meter and looking at what's wrong and go ahead and start cleaning everything and preparing, polishing the plastic on, getting everything ready to go back together. I hope to catch you in that next video. Thank you so much for being part of the channel.